Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at two worked examples to show you how to find EMF and internal resistance from a voltage current graph. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get going. Question 1 says that the graph below shows the terminal potential difference across a cell as an increasing current is drawn from it. So we've got voltage V against current in milliamps. Part A says to state the EMF of the cell. Well, you should remember that from a graph, we can find the EMF by getting the y-axis intercept. So we can say that EMF is equal to the y-axis intercept, which is equal to 1.5 volts. And we can see that on the graph at this point here. Part B then says to calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Well, remember to find internal resistance, we need to calculate the gradient of the line on the graph. So firstly, choosing two points on the line, let's say we chose x1, y1 to be 0, 1.5, and x2, y2 to be 200 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1.4, Notice I've changed the milliamps for the x-axis into amps because it wouldn't work otherwise. And you can see the obvious points that I've chosen is 0, 1.5 on the line and 200 milliamps and 1.4. So we've got 0, 1.5 and 200 milliamps, 1.4, but we need to change the milliamps into amps. So just watch out for any graph that you're ever using to check that you're not being given prefixes as some of the units. So here we need to convert from milliamps to amps. So once we've got our coordinates for the two points, we can say the negative of the internal resistance minus R is equal to the gradient M, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And then we plug in the numbers to get 1.4 minus 1.5 divided by 200 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 0. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get a value of minus 0 0.5. However, we've now got negative R on this side and negative 0 0.5 on this side. So we can cancel out the negatives to get R is equal to 0 0.5 ohms. Lastly, question two says that a circuit is set up as shown below. So we've got a voltmeter in parallel with our battery with its internal resistance and the dashed box line to enclose those. We've then got an ammeter in series with a variable resistor. It then says the variable resistor R is adjusted and a series of readings taken from the voltmeter and ammeter. The graph below shows how the voltmeter reading varies with the ammeter reading. So we've got a graph here of terminal potential difference or voltage against current. And we're given some dashed lines on the graph which is going to make it easier for us to choose some points later on if we need to. It then says using the graph for part A, estimate the EMF of the cell. So notice this word estimate suggests that there's going to be a wee bit of leeway in the answer and that's because in order to find the EMF, remember EMF is the y-axis intercept, so in order to find the y-axis intercept I need to extend this line back to the y-axis. So we first need to extend the line back through the y-axis and to do that I'm just going to extend my y-axis up the way a wee bit just so that it's not off the graph. So extending the y-axis there we can then extend our line here to go back through the x-axis like this. And you'll notice that this distance here is a spacing of two volts. So another two volts up here would be somewhere like here. So that would be about eight volts, but you'll notice we're not quite at eight volts, we're above eight volts. So I would probably estimate this as about nine volts. So we could say that the EMF is equal to the y-axis intercept, which equals about nine volts. And as I said, there's going to be some sort of leeway in this question, some tolerance, because we're having to estimate it. Part B then says to calculate the internal resistance of the cell. So remember to find the internal resistance from the graph, we need to find the gradient of the line. So going back to the graph here, the two easiest points to choose on the line would probably be 1, 6 and 3, 0. Writing down those two points on the line, we have x1, y1 equals 1, 6 and x2, y2 equals 3, 0. And then we can write that the negative r, the negative of the internal resistance, is equal to the gradient m, which equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and then sub in the numbers to get 0 minus 6 divided by 3 minus 1, which equals minus 3 once you put it into our calculator. However, remember we've got the two negatives here, which will cancel out. This leaves us with an answer of r equals 3 ohms. Lastly, part C says to calculate the short circuit current. Well, remember for a short circuit, we say that the load resistance R equals zero, which in turn means that the terminal potential difference big V also equals zero. So we say that V equals zero for a short circuit, and this means we can simplify our equation for EMF, E equals V plus IR, to be E equals IR. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the short circuit current. We know that EMF is nine volts from our estimate in part A. The terminal potential difference V we've said is zero volts, and the internal resistance R we've worked out in part B to be three ohms. So writing down our equation, we have E equals V plus IR, but remember this will simplify to essentially just E equals IR because this is zero. So substituting in the numbers, we get nine equals zero plus three I. Swapping the sides now, we get three I equals nine and dividing both sides by three to get I on its own gives us I equals three amps. 
That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.